So it's really important that we start to understand who we are, where we came from, how our genes are expressing themselves, and how we need to eat in order to make them express themselves the way that we want them to. Because if your goals are aesthetic, and you say, well, I'm an endomorph, but I want to get rid of this layer of fat that my body keeps putting on, okay, well, is it possible? Absolutely, it really is. But especially if you understand that, okay, if you eat higher carbohydrate foods and a higher carbohydrate diet, well, you're gonna have a big insulin response and ten you're gonna have a tendency to store it very quickly. We need to take that into consideration and that's why when I talk about you know an endo-shaped type of breakdown for your foods, we take a lot of the carbohydrates out and it's gonna be a lot more protein, a lot more fats, and uh, well, not a lot more fats, but, but moderately increased in fats, a lot of veggies. And so you can still do great off of that kind of diet. Plus, um, even though your body adapts quickly, no matter what, we can still create a calorie deficit and we can still lean you down very, very well. But it's really all about food combinations when we're talking about metabolic typing. So can you be an endomorph and can you be 10% body fat? Absolutely. We just need to identify the fact that you are an endomorph and then also start playing around with those food combinations accordingly to get you where you need to be. Keep in mind, the law of thermodynamics states, you know, energy can't be created nor destroyed. And so as long as I can put you at a calorie deficit, but then feed you those food combinations just to make sure that I don't elicit this big insulin response and I keep your body breaking down more than building up, we can lean you down. Okay, so endomorphs, that's taken care of. Now we've got that middle of the road, the hybrid between the two, and that's your mesomorphs. So they're not a slow oxidizer, they're not a fast oxidizer, they're more of a mixed oxidizer. And so mesomorphs, they tend to do better on a zone type diet, which is gonna be like a 40% carbohydrate, 30% protein, 30% fats. And they really are the hybrid between the two. They're, they're not short in stature with, with, uh, with thick bone structure. They're not tall and lean and lanky with a thin bone structure. They're usually right there in the middle, much more of an hourglass shape, and typically um, more of a, an athletic type structure. They do really well with just moderate proteins, moderate carbohydrates, and moderate fats, just real middle of the road. So those are gonna be the three body shapes that we talk about. Can we manipulate all three? Absolutely. It really comes down to calories in, calories out, and that's gonna determine weight gain or weight loss. Um, when it comes to the composition of the body, that's gonna be our combination. So once we've got calories in, calories out dialed in, great. Now, we, I, need, I know that I can either have you gain weight and gain muscle or lose weight and lose fat or lose muscle. We can do all kinds of things, but we're gonna play around with calories in, calories out first. Once we've got that dialed in, now let's talk about food combinations. And those food combinations, we need to dial them in, specifically whether you're an endo, or you're an ecto, or you're a meso. And then from there, you know, portions. Portions go directly hand in hand with the calories in, calories out. Then we've got food timing, and that's getting you just to eat those five meals of the day every three hours, your money. So really when it comes down to all those ectos out there saying, well, you know, I, or I'm sorry, not the ectos, but the endos out there saying, well, I'm an endomorph, is there any hope for me? Yes, absolutely. If aesthetics are your goal, absolutely. Like we need to create that deficit. Granted, your body will adapt to the deficit faster, and so we need to keep throwing curveballs at your body. And that's why when, I, when building any kind of program, it's important that we never do the same thing over and over and over again for several days. We, we induce exercise, we pull exercise out, we switch up with high and low carbohydrate days. That's why I like to keep switching things up because it keeps shocking your body so it never gets used to anything because endos, you guys adapt very, very quickly. Keep in mind, if it really came down to a survival race, if you're an endo, you're gonna survive before anybody because your bodies are built for that kind of survival. But also another thing I want to touch upon is that nobody's all meso or all ecto or all endo. We've we're actually somewhat blends of all those different types based on where we came from. And especially here in, in America, we are the ultimate melting pot. I mean, you ask me, I am a mutt of all these different European descendants, a little bit of American Indian. And, um, you know, where the rest of it comes from, I really don't know. So... The, the best thing we can do is since we don't, since many of us really don't know our heritage and our ancestry, um, a lot of things we can do is just kind of to take a look at our body and how we respond to foods and that's going to help us kind of classify whether we are dominantly endo, ecto, or meso and which ones we're dominant in and which ones we're weaker in. So remember, I, me, I am probably more dominantly a mesomorph, so I'd be a meso shape, but there could be some ecto and some endo somewhere in my bloodline, and those are gonna, they're going to, those genes will express themselves in very um, 
uh, specific ways, but I'm dominantly meso. You might be dominantly endo or dominantly ecto. One or the other, either way, it's all good. Hopefully this helped answer just a few questions for you. And, well, gosh, guys, keep writing them in, reshapethenation at gmail.com. And I tell you what, if, you, if you're interested in doing a little bit more research on there, um, the Metabolic Typing Diet, it's fantastic. That's uh, written by William Walcott. Or just a quick Google search, you can see all these different things about where metabolic typing came from. But keep in mind, um, just like anything, uh, look into it with an open mind and use it as a tool. All it's going to do is just going to educate you and kind of open your eyes to some other possibilities of who you are, where you came from, and, and some, some research and some, the thought process behind how we eat to help our body and our genes express them, themselves in the way that we want them to. So uh, just do a quick little Google search on that and you'll read all about endos, ectos, mesos, the whole nine. All right guys, so hopefully I opened your eyes to something a little bit newer today and um, just keep writing in with those questions and I'll keep answering them. All right, guys, reshape the nation. See you guys.